Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. When God wants to correct a man's ignorance and take away spiritual limitation from your life, he gives you a higher perception of spiritual things. Let me tell you the truth. There is something God can show you about finances that will make it look like you are holding a charm. You will conquer finances in this realm in a way that surprises you. There is something God can show you about the healing ministry and you will command tremendous power it's not just an impartation it's a product of light most times we just seek impartations you see impartation is like fuel in a car the fuel does not drive the car are we together now you still need a driver revelation is that driver the driver without the fuel will not be able to move but you just carry gas a jerry can say of gas and just put it in the car you are not going anywhere without a good driver. It doesn't matter even if it's a new car. Revelation is that driver. It creates transitions. The value of the anointing is that it comes upon an individual who is transformed by light. You see the potential of impartation when transformation by light has happened. Are we together now? When the vessel is small, it makes the oil small. You will blame the oil but the oil has potential to assume the shape of any vessel given to it. The prophet said the problem is that the vessel is small. He says go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. Hallelujah. When I began my work with the Lord, the Lord insisted upon my life that I focus on revelation. You will be surprised that those who really walk in power do not focus so much about power because power is the end product of something. It's an equation. Something plus something plus something equals power. Are we together now? Yes. There is a light component you must have. Look at me. Every area of darkness in your life today, I am telling you, not just by prophecy, is at the mercy of higher levels of revelation. And you may have held certain truth. <laughs> Do you know, sometimes I laugh at myself because I'm one person who has seen the power of God in my life in a very humbling way. But I look at my former self now and sometimes I'm tempted to laugh. Amazing how many things I did not know about the anointing. If you saw me then, you would think that because of what you were seeing, I knew everything about the anointing. I'm looking at my former self now, even as I'm talking, and I'm laughing at my former self. My God, look the gap in knowledge. Are we learning? It is amazing how many things we do not know enough of. And you see, when it has to do with results in the kingdom, you are not at liberty to choose the level of knowledge you want. There is a requisite level of knowledge enough to command certain results. I think it's 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Please give it to us. Let's try it. Is God helping someone? 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. Let's read it together if you see it projected. I want you to read it as loud and as clear as you can. Ready? One, two, read. Uh -huh. One more time, please. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to. Hmm. As he ought to. I think I've, I've, I've given this illustration here where you find a student whose course F, students who have the grade F, F does not necessarily mean zero. F means anything less than 40. Am I right on that? So the student who did not sit for the examination, the one who got 10%, 20%, even 39%, they all failed. And yet, the one who scored 39% performed better than the one who scored 10, but they still failed. This is the deception of limited knowledge. 
you will look and compare yourself and say at least I know better than this but based on that grade level you are all at the same experience so if you say all those who scored above 30 percent someone will stand proudly and say at least sorry for you who scored one two or you who did not sit for the exam but when we say those who scored F all of you stand up to his surprise they will all be in the same group it is amazing how many things we brag about but the realm of the spirit groups us in one place <laughs> see that I've been in ministry for 10 15 years and the realm of the spirit says that's good but here is the realm of those who do not know enough this is where they stay so the experience of the one who does not know God and the one who is so limited it becomes the same because an heir for as long as he's a child he differed not no distinguishing factor from a slave even though he be Lord of all it is amazing how many things ladies and gentlemen God wants to bring us into but because of limited spiritual knowledge what do you not know yet about Satan what do you not know yet about God's power what do you not know yet about favor did you know that once upon a time in my life I would only talk about favor like a discussion somewhere but I saw people who embodied this thing and I said no the Lord the same Lord is rich unto all you see I had to take responsibility to say there is something I have not seen I tell you the truth everything that works for anyone can work for you but not under every condition there is a light requirement hmm. come up here rise from your current level spiritually man of God rise woman of God rise are we together yes oh apostle but I'm a great prophet to what accuracy two over ten are we together now you're a wonderful lady you prophesied to ten people eight were wrong congratulations for the two you got right but that is not you will not take the nations that way not with that margin of error there is need to rise oh I'm walking in the healing anointing what are the testimonies honestly not stage money genuine healings two people out of how many in that place if you heal two out of every ten is that enough to call it a healing ministry you should be grateful but not contented not like no 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 you should be angry a holy dissatisfaction the Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of an apostle same Lord same grace same blood that you receive what has changed now why can we not we not enter their experience you know most times we talk about so many things in the Bible sometimes I feel uh, not condemnation but sincerely I feel guilty as a preacher when I'm reading certain things I'm almost tempted to close it and say God what is wrong with us what is wrong with us how do you feel comfortable reading this my God there were men who were like gods in the Bible if you saw Samuel your life would have to change he was called a seer just by seeing him what is missing returns back home he has not prayed oh you just encountered him how about Moses the nation of Israel as soon as they saw him the light they said no 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 he did not even know his face was shining that's what the glory of God can do these were not parables it's in your Bible Jesus will heal people and beg them not to announce it they were too grateful to keep quiet how about women who encountered him once left their water pots left everything and ran to a city when was the last time that happened you encountered many people they argued with you they almost injured you you had to leave yet it's the same God you were trying to talk about how about prophets who said by this time tomorrow how many times have we said by this time tomorrow by this time next week by this time one month and nothing happened come up here that is a journey to perfection it's a journey to maturity it's a journey to command of authentic power and grace that you can demonstrate God to a generation my God I read about these ones we call God's generals and you know we talk a lot about them but let me tell you sincerely without any condemnation we do not come 
close to even those who cleaned those churches those days. I've had the honor of watching some of their videos. I've had the honor of listening to a few people who were at their meetings. History and media did not do justice in capturing the extent of the God life that flowed through them. Email. Email. Oh, Kaka. Help me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Email. Email. Listen. We've been shouting forever that the wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous. There are few people. The testimonies are so scanty, it looks like a lie. We have said this thing for a long time. I'm part of those who have said it. That there are men who will handle the wealth of nations. And yet the unbelievers, we keep saying money will flow to them. They look at us with pity. Then later we beg them, say, help me while I'm trying to get this thing. Something is wrong with our understanding. I'm not being sarcastic. It's a prophetic convergence. The goal is to plant a holy hunger and anger within you something is wrong we're not getting something right are we together there's something we're not getting right and let me tell you if you continue doing church that way very soon our pews will be empty because people are looking for god they want to see the grace the power of god are we together they want to see a god that answers prayer they want to see a God whose love can be proven in the world of men. They want to see a God whose mercy, when you say he's a lifter, show he's a lifter. When you say he can turn lives around, show he can turn lives around. When you say he heals, let the sick be the one to testify that he healed me. There are results that are too notable to be manipulated, too notable to be faked. Are we together? Now, thank God for all these small healings, not, not to demean them, it's all the power of God. But it's not notable enough. How many believers have prospered in the UK the way the Bible says should happen? We keep saying we have the power to get wealth. We keep saying the favor of God is on us. And the Bible has left us exceeding great and precious promises. Now there are unbelievers who are looking. Okay, let me study from afar. Let me see a demonstration of God's faithfulness in the life of this person. Yes, you can serve God in spite of. But how about serving God in the midst of? You can serve God in the midst of blessings. Are we together now? Away with that mentality that your increase and prosperity is dangerous. Is, is ignorance the holiest person on earth the holiest person in our uh, God himself is still the wealthiest person it did not affect his holiness the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him the very earth there all this argument about land the real owner is the epitome of holiness many of you here right now if I ask you to write your request like I'll be asking you in the evening most of it will be housing issues am i right on that or some kind of bill some of you whilst you are seated here you love jesus with all your heart but you would be a better believer if certain things were sorted you would be a better witness of his faithfulness if certain things were sorted is the reason why we celebrate testimonies when we hear them first because we glorify god but it also connects to what we truly desire god this is what i want to this is what i'm trusting you to do to Hallelujah. T.L. Osborne, when he began his ministry, he just began by talking about a God he did not know. He went to India and he was disappointed. Nobody listened to him. A few tragedies happened in his life that caused him to go back and seek God, to get authentic power to be a witness. He returned back to, you, to India and the same deafness they gave to his, to his word, he got angry. And he called, I was told, several sick people right in the presence of everyone. When miracles began to erupt, let me tell you this. 
when you see a genuine manifestation of the hand of God, no matter how hardened you are, something will happen to you. Even if you choose to live in denial, you will never be the same. If you actually see God display his power in the midst of men, it becomes too notable. You may argue it and pretend it like the scribes and the Pharisees, but you will go back home with conviction. I saw it. It is truly God. This kind of testimony, men cannot produce it. This kind of change of story, man cannot do this. That a sister came here and by evening, someone called you and said, God told me to give you a house. How do you say that is coincidence? Are we together now? I'll take care of your children all through to college. Diagnosed of stage four cancer with the medical reports and both you and the doctor who treated you are in the service and he's watching your other report. Come on now. We rob God from being glorified when we do not grow, when we do not rise, when we do not contend, when we keep talking, proposing a God to the nations whose power and ability and wisdom we cannot defend. Let me tell you this. This generation that God has placed us now is not a generation of blind loyalty. You are going to have to give an evidence. There is a generation that has been distracted away from God through technology, through the reality of the times that we live in, you want to call their attention, it's not going to be by blind loyalty. You will waste your time for nothing. It is the reason why our churches continue to get emptier and emptier. Do you know why? There are enough people to fill them, but the evidence to bring them there is not there. And if you do not have the evidence, you are not a witness. What makes a witness a witness is that he has a token of truthfulness called evidence. I was blessed listening to the testimonies the dear lady who came sharing her testimony and while I sat there I said God these are the kinds of things we want to see spectacular manifestations of his grace beyond falling down and standing up beyond shouting in church when we shout in church we are the only ones who know what we are doing now I'm not I'm not downplaying it but I mean who cares translate the God life to a context that will silence the arguments of men silence the arguments of men that you stood before all men and said the God I serve lived they will laugh at you and mock at you let them find a reason to say I'm sorry because God will sign something upon your life and someone will come to you to say listen this is the kind of God I want to follow we are selling a Jesus to our nations they are not interested in because our testimony about him makes him look fake our testimony about him makes social media look better than him if I can create an app or I can send something about my product and with one click it goes around the world and you are telling me love him serve him because you love him but then that he can lift you and you claim to have placed favor on my head and I do not see any no when a herbalist does something to you you will see the result this is somebody you believe is not of God you believe is of the devil and yet he gives you all kinds of rubbish tie this do this drink this do that and then in the midst of it as ugly as it looks you will be surprised that the destiny helper just shows up from somewhere and say I don't even know what I'm doing here but you know what brought him come up here come up here preachers come up here businessmen come up here that in one year you start a business and in that one year listen I, I'm not I, I believe in process I don't believe in get rich quick but I also don't believe in get rich slow no I don't I don't unapologetically so don't think I'm going to say I'm sorry not at all do you know why because the purpose of wealth is to serve the program of God and you need time to serve the program of God and if that whole time is spent trying to get your needs met is an attack that's not how it was supposed to work you believe me on this it's an attack hallelujah so the call come up hither is a proposal from God to begin a journey with him a journey that makes your Christian experience always effective an experience with God that turns you like we shared the last time during our retreat for the workers 
a sign and a wonder. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how we shout revival, we brag revival, we discuss revival, the world will keep looking at us, making a jest of ourselves in church until we can import the God life to a context that rattles our civilization as we know it. Three Hebrew boys, they didn't talk revival, but they caused revival. They entered the fire and in 24 hours, or less than that, they brought great glory to the name of the Lord. Today we shout revival, we write books about it, but nothing happens that looks like it. Because it was not supposed to be a discussion, it was a demonstration. A demonstration of men who have found God, found God genuinely, enough to use the power that has come from that encounter to influence their world. But let me tell you, in the name of Jesus, the body of Christ is rising. Even the body of Christ in Europe is rising. I was reading a few statistics about the church in Europe, and with all due respect, it broke my heart. It really broke my heart. It broke my heart. The decline in terms of passion for God, the decline in terms of church attendance, the decline in the interest of people even to get into ministry, because they have so failed in ministry, they failed carrying the name of Jesus on their heads and the world told them, go back. Go and know the Jesus. Unbelievers recommended that they needed encounters. They said, we don't believe in Jesus, but this one is not the one you are talking about. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to give you three keys. Keep these keys. And you will find yourself walking in profound dimensions of the God life. These keys have come from my study of scripture, my study of men and women by the grace of God who have done much and are doing much for the kingdom. And they have also come by the privilege of the bit that God has helped us to see in this spiritual journey. Is someone ready to learn? I want to show you by the Spirit three hindrances that can stop you from coming up hither. The hindrances, three of them, that can stop you from attaining the reality of the life and the power of God. If you avoid these three keys, I tell you, regardless what level you are in now, spiritually and otherwise, you will transit in the Spirit faster than you ever imagined. You will step into realms of the anointing. You will step into realms of power, realms of wisdom, realms of grace. You believe that? Shout aloud, amen. amen. Pray in the spirit for one minute and then we'll discuss this very briefly. Hmm. Come up hither. A journey to higher levels deeper dimensions in the spirit I believe I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe number one the first hindrance to rising to a higher dimension in the spirit the first hindrance that will stop you from coming up hither by the spirit of God is called disinterest towards God and spiritual things. Disinterest towards God. Disinterest towards God 
and spiritual things. There are men and women who will never rise to superior dimensions in the spirit. Not because of an attack from Satan. There is a determination from them as an act of their will that I'm not interested in God and I'm not interested in the things of the spirit. I have met people that way. They have met me, they have listened to my messages and you would think they would be so transformed. I have met people who as an act of their will, they have made up their mind as a commitment that they will not be serious with God. This interest completely towards God and towards spiritual things. This interest towards prayer. This interest towards the ministry of the word. This interest towards church. Have you, have you met people like that? No matter how spectacular you share your testimony, they will watch this way. It's not an attack. They just as an act of their will, they have not seen the relevance of God nor spiritual things in their lives. There is no coming up higher for such a person. As much as God is wonderful and merciful and compassionate, he allows men to show their interest. Then he brings you. I looked and then he said, come up here. This interest towards God. When you really want to help a man to do business with God, you have to pray for grace for that person to as an act of his or her will, find interest in the things of God. Are we together now? There are people who are not interested in anything prayer. They are not interested in anything word study. They are not interested in anything spiritual development. They would argue and argue and say to what end? They would listen to a message like this and all they can find, oh, well, he's a nice man. I like the way he speaks and wow. See the people saying amen. What nice people. I think if people are like this, our society will be better. That's all you got from this? This interest. As funny as that sounds, there are people even in your region like that. Their issue is not ignorance. They have access to anybody who can help them. They are just not interested. There are children like that. There are parents like that. Their children are prayer warriors, fasting giants, apostles and prophets. And yet the father or the mother, they can say, wow, I hear that um, you are doing well. In fact, I hear right now that you bought a church building. Thumbs up, you are my son. And yet the man will never be changed by his son, Simon. It's not an attack. He will even advise you and say, let me advise you. Do ministry well. Make sure you love God. You have one building now. Make sure you consider expansion. I think that's a good idea. This is the man advising you. You say, can I pray no, that, that, that prayer thing? Don't worry, I'm okay. I'm fine all by myself. And you see, because God gave men a will, he will respect you, even at the detriment of your efficiency in the spirit. Are we together? God cannot help a man beyond his level of interest for spiritual things. The Bible says to be spiritually minded is life, but to be carnally minded is death. Even if you do not have the power to sponsor that transition, your willingness to want God, your willingness to love God, your willingness to love his house, his word, prayer, your willingness to love the realm where you stand in the anointing, being a blessing to people, that's enough. But if God does not find that willingness, believe me, you will not go far with him. This interest in spiritual things. Some of you, when you came to UK here, you watched as an act of your will. You began to prioritize a lot of things and God was not part of it. And for some, sadly, God is still not part of it. You like the idea of God. In fact, one of your plans is to build an auditorium like this so that you can help churches. But your passion for God, you're not interested. It's time for everything. Come up hither. It's a call to use the gift of your will to say, I need you. I need you. <laughs> I need you. I don't know my way around this spiritual, this, this jungle of the realm of the spirit, but Lord, I need you. The Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Not them who assume he is there. Them that call upon him. You must declare your interest. For someone you came for service this morning and the Lord is saying, I am ready to help you. If you are willing, willing, willing. Complete disinterest. 
it is true that the prophetic is in your destiny the apostolic the pastoral the healing ministry kingdom financing all of this is true but are you interested in God enough are we together now are you interested in him enough is prayer a distraction to you or you perceive it to be a distraction the study of the word how about the house of God there are many people who have not learned the value of the house of God when the psalmist said I rather be a doorkeeper how can a man who is a king what is in the house of God that is not in his palace that man's palace was made of gold and yet he said I would give that up to be in his presence that means there must be something in his presence that gold cannot give there must be something in his presence silver cannot give there must be something in his presence employment cannot give don't reduce God to an employment letter don't reduce God to just a coin silver he gives all this but he's more than that is someone learning the value of his presence to a point that Moses now a prophet and a deliverer would say if your presence would not go with us do not send us from here the man was willing to assume the position of delay provided God's presence will not go how can a man prefer delay I rather be here in the UK and not have a house not have a car if your presence will not go with me a man can choose that that means there's something about his presence you must learn hallelujah this interest for the things of God In 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 4. Let's hurry up so we can wrap up this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 4. I'm showing you the first hindrance. He said, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Verse 2. He says, for men shall be lovers of their own self. Does that look like today? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, uh -huh. without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Final verse, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. They would give up God a thousand times to embrace pleasure. Is someone learning? As you are listening to me, allow the Spirit of God that there is a circumcision that is happening within your heart and don't fight it. That circumcision, that, that cutting away is bringing you to a higher level in the Spirit. There are things God cannot do with you with your current version. Disinterest. For someone you came this morning and your cry should be walk on my heart. My passion has died. Walk on my heart, oh God. I don't know what happened. It didn't used to be like this before I came to the United Kingdom. Or it didn't used to be like this before I got a job. It didn't used to be like this before I got married, before I got children. Now the vicissitudes of life have eroded away my passion for the things of God. There needs to be a restoration. It's an emergency case. Are we together? Because I can tell you, everything you hold on to that God is not the one holding on to, you will lose it. And you believe me, I don't know everything, but I've sojourned this life a bit to know that it is vanity to hold anything God is not holding. Eventually, you will find out that it will evaporate like a vapor in one moment. I have seen the influence of many diminish overnight. I've seen the wealth of many diminish overnight. I've seen governments change and with one policy, millionaires became paupers overnight. It is only what God keeps that is really kept. Nobody can keep anything God has not kept. Listen, my dear people, listen to me. I want you to cultivate a hunger and a passion for God that as an act of your will, you will make up your mind that from this session, I'm ready to come up hither. Ready. I am ready. Ready with my life. That everything you have designed for me, I'm ready to become it. But that would be at the mercy of your interest. That Lord, whatever it takes to find my prayer life back to life, my word study life, my passion for the house of God, 
tired of giving excuses that is because I'm a mother tired of giving excuses that is because now I have children tired of saying I'm living far away it's a lie everybody has time for what you place value on did you hear what I said there are many people who would not go to the house of God but you call them and say I have a check of 10,000 pounds where are you I'm at the other end of London can you come I'm coming right away I've searched my life and I pray to God every time I'm even while I'm standing here that if there is anything that can take his place in my life may he never give me no 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 you know I've said amen many times amen with tears in my eyes believe me you see when you see God using people in spectacular ways it's more than an impartation it's more than good preaching. It's more than Greek and Hebrew. You can shout all you can. There is a presence factor that only your hunger. You see, the nations will not listen to you just because you have something to say. Our world is full of eloquent men. Our world is full of wise men. Our world is full of technocrats, intelligent men. Who have stretched their mental faculty border to border when i had an invitation to come to harvard and deliver a lecture i went to god in prayer and i said lord i'm not a lecturer i'm not an academ I'm an, an academician why did you do this because i know that everything god does there is purpose behind it and god said i'm fulfilling something that i told you that if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you and if that is done in the religious world alone, it will look like the bias of spirituality. But if that happens within a secular institution, now those professors are not fools. This is Harvard. And when God brought glory to his name, I returned back. And I remember this. After this, I looked. <laughs> After this. No, I don't look behind for too long. Thank you. Well done. After this, I looked. After the sound of revival, great things that God did. My goodness, my phone was full of text messages and, you know, all kinds of things. I remember preparing to go back. The night I would leave UK, I got down my knees. And I said, oh God, show me mercy. Let the foolishness that has destroyed great men not catch up with me. After this, I looked. Now we're preparing for sound of revival. US, UK, and in the midst of the wonderful things happening, Canada, all of these places. And sometimes, you know, people sincerely send wonderful commendations. But after this, I looked. After this anything that happens in time is not worth your distraction rejoice over it but after this i remember a gentleman who flew all the way from the u.s had been mightily impacted and this gentleman came in to come and sow a seed met i think we met in ghana and then i prayed for him he returned back and god opened up his you know his financial destiny this gentleman was making five figures every month doing very well and he decided he took was it a hundred thousand dollars or something of that sort just to come and sow into my life and when he came down to Nigeria I met him and when he was saying all those things he first did a video and gave our people to show me and then when he came I looked at him it was such a spectacular testimony and as I looked at him the Lord told me he said that money is not your own tell him to go back to U.S. with it and sow it into the Koinoni account there in U.S. for the conference. Yes, sir. What do I have that did not come from you? And then when I was done, it was such a great testimony. It's a good thing as a leader to teach people and see them become. That is your pride. But after this, I looked. After tonight, we wrap up this session have a session with the workers but after that 
even after God does the great things that you'll be doing here in the UK in months to come, believe me, you've not seen anything like it. You, if you think you saw his hand last year, watch what he's going to do this year. Yeah. Because the Bible says they go from strength to strength. You will see his hand in spectacular ways. Look forward to the sound of revival. Hallelujah. But even after this, we will still look away from this, but toward him. Because before this came, he was, he still is. So when we look at this for a while, and once it is done, we take our gaze immediately. Let the world keep doing the clapping. But we set our gaze. It's a big secret. I'm showing you hindrances. Disinterest. Perhaps you are in this place and you were just invited because you were told, you know, sincerely, it was just supposed to be a session with the workers. But I decided that, look, let's just open it up. And that's why we decided to limit all of this. Hallelujah. It's the reason why you see that we restricted a lot of things, you know, because we didn't want people beyond the space and then to have any chaos here. After this, I looked. If you can look beyond everything around your life, good or bad, then you are ready to continue with God. When bad things happen, you learn from them and you keep looking. When great things happen, you use them to be encouraged, but you keep looking. That way you have mastered continuity. That after 10 years, you will still be standing. And when people say, what is your secret? You say, it's because I've learned how to look. When I cry, I still look. When I laugh, I still look. My feelings, my victories, my crowns, all my scars do not stop me from looking. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.